Hello, today I'm going to show you how to convert a raster image into a vector object using the image trace option. First, let me explain the difference between those two types of graphics. Here we have a raster image on the left and a vector image on the right. Right now you might not see much of a difference between these two images. Let's zoom in. A raster graphic, such as a GIF or JPEG, is composed of pixels, while a vector graphic such as an EPS file or Adobe Illustrator file is composed of paths or lines. Let's zoom in even closer. Because vector graphics are not made of pixels, the images can be scaled to be very large without losing quality. Raster graphics, however, become blocky since each pixel increases in size as the image is made larger. Let's place a raster image into our document. To do this, go to File, Place, find the image you would like to use and click Place. Before you do anything, take a look at the top toolbar. Now place your image. With the placed image selected, the toolbar will change, displaying specific information about the file and give you other options. Today we will be using the Image Trace option. When you click on it, Illustrator converts the image into a black and white tracing result by default. Let's undo it. By clicking on this little arrow next to the Image Trace button, you can select the basic tracing presets. Or you can go to Window and select Image Trace to open the Image Trace panel. When the image is selected, the options in the Image Trace panel become available. You can choose from Auto Color, which creates a posterized image from a photo or an artwork. High Color, Low color, grayscale, black and white, or outline. Let's look at all the available presets. The top one is the high fidelity photo. Depending on your computer and file size, it might take longer to render it. And we have the raster and high fidelity tracing result side by side. Next, there is the Low Fidelity Photo option, the Three Colors option, Six Colors, Sixteen Colors, Shades of Grey, Black and White Logo, Sketched Art, Silhouettes, here you might need to adjust the threshold slider to get more white or black. And we have two more. Line Art and Technical Drawing. Let's change the setting to black and white logo. The selected image displays a number of paths, colors and anchor points as well. A tracing object is made of two components, the original source image and the tracing result, which is the vector artwork. You can choose to view the tracing result, which is what we see, tracing result with outlines, outlines. You can click on the eye icon to overlay the selected view over the source image. And two more options, outlines with source image and source image. Let's change the view to tracing result. You can also specify a color mode or a palette for generating a color or grayscale tracing from the original image. Let's click on this arrow to open the advanced pull-down menu. Here you can use paths to control the distance between the traced shape and the original pixel shape, 
Higher values create a looser puff fitting. Lower values create a tighter puff fitting. Corners specifies the emphasis on corners and the likeliness that a sharp bend will turn into a corner point. A higher value results in more corners. Noise specifies an area in pixels that is ignored while tracing. A higher value results in less noise. For a high resolution image, move the noise slider to a higher value and for a low resolution image, set it lower. There is also an option of choosing a different tracing method. I'm going to trace the image on the right using the high fidelity photo option. Notice that Illustrator automatically chooses the overlapping method. Let's trace the image on the left using the high fidelity photo as well, but this time we will choose the abutting method. You can't see any difference yet. First, let me expand both images. The overlapping method creates stacked paths. Each path slightly overlaps its neighbor. It can, however, produce some empty spaces. You can fix it by adjusting the anchor points. The abutting method creates cutout paths. Here, the separate paths do not overlap and they fit like a puzzle. There is also an option of saving a tracing preset. To do this, Click on the icon next to the preset pull-down menu, give it a name and click OK. If you wish, you can also discard a tracing, but keep the original placed image. To do this, go to Object, Image Trace and choose Release. Now you can go back to the preset pull-down menu and apply the saved custom preset. Let's see how it will look on a transparent background. If you would like to remove all the white from your image, select the Ignore White option. In the next tutorial, I will show you how to edit traced images. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.